I'm John Weltman, and I am the founder and president of Circle Surrogacy. Um, we have been working in Sweden now, I think, for nine years. Our oldest child is here, he's a little over seven. Uh, I am here to talk on behalf of our agency, and because we were not able to bring a social worker with us, I will both talk to you about what our social workers do as well as what our legal process is. Um, with us, I have brought um, <coughs> Dr. Vito Cardoni, who is one of the doctors that we work with very regularly in the Boston area, who does in vitro fertilization. Um, his wife and the head of his staff, Danielle Cardoni, who will herself talk about the coordination of the cycles, because for some people, they will just need an egg donor. For some people, and obviously that would not be a gay couple, that would be a heterosexual couple. For some people, they will just need a gestational carrier, and again, that would be only a heterosexual couple. Um, and then for some gay couples and heterosexual, they need both an egg donor and a gestational carrier, and the coordination is very crucial, particularly for people from out of the country. Um, <coughs> Peter is a parent through our program, and the two little girls over there are kids and Jonas's, and um, hopefully, um, I don't know whether they will talk to you, but he at least will tell you a little bit about his experience and also his experience in Sweden. And Martin, I think, is going to go first and talk to you a little bit about the state of the law in Sweden. Okay. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that it is an honor to be here at this uh, seminar uh, to, um, to bring my perspective to, to the uh, issue of surrogacy. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting John uh, in 2006 in Boston uh, when I uh, participated in the fact-finding journey as, uh, at that time, Member of Parliament in Sweden for the Liberal Party. Uh, and that fact-finding journey was, uh, the reason for that journey was, among other things, that there is a, an increasing interest in Sweden not only among uh, people, but also among among the political parties about the issue of service. There is, uh, alas, I must say, a great lack of knowledge among many uh, politicians from all political parties in, in Sweden about the issue. The legal framework in Sweden regarding parentship uh, for the time being uh, closes out the possibility of, of surrogacy in Sweden because of the Swedish definition of who can be uh, the mother of a child, uh, etc. So, for the time being, uh, legal surrogacy taking place in Sweden is unfortunately not a possibility. Ever. I think that there is, as I said, a, an increasing interest in the issue and that increase is the result of two factors. First of all, that there is a, a widening knowledge about the fact that uh, surrogacy is a fact in many Western countries, among others, not the least, the United States. And also, the increasing visibility of uh, families who have, uh, um, where child, children have been born uh, with the help of surrogacy. And we see now that the first um, situations have taken place when the issue ha has been discussed at, at the party congresses and the like, so that, that awareness of the issue is, is increasing. And I think it is an excellent initiative to or arrange this seminar in order to increase the knowledge and also uh, uh, spread the knowledge in Sweden about the possibilities in other countries for people in Sweden who are interested in becoming parents through surrogacy. So I think it is, an, uh, as I said, it is a very good initiative to have this uh, seminar in order to increase the knowledge and, and raise the possibilities for, for people uh, thinking about becoming parents. Thank you very much. Let me start then and um, just take off where Martin picked up as to why we are finding such an enormous growth internationally of people turning to the United States for surrogacy. 
Our program is now about 40% international. We are working with 30 different countries, South Korea, Afghanistan, um, Israel, every European country, um, Australia, in part because the United States is known worldwide as the center for surrogacy safely. There are other countries where it's possible, India, South Africa, but the legal establishment is not as secure as it is in the United States. What people may or may not be aware of is that in all of the disputes in the United States in which a woman has carried a child for a couple, every single one of the courts has held that the couple has 100% rights to the child and there are no rights whatsoever for the gestational carrier. So that one of the things we tell people is that there is no more secure way to have a child on earth than surrogacy in the United States. The reason is this, for your average couple in the United States attempting to adopt, about one out of every three women will change their mind and they have complete rights to make that decision. So only about 70% of people will end up with a child. For every heterosexual couple having intercourse and attempting to have a child, about one in six, or about 83% will have a child, five out of six will have a child, 83%, and one out of six will be incapable of doing so. So that is about 83%. For our process, where we use usually both a gestational carrier and an egg donor, but also even with gestational surrogacy, about 99% of our couples end up getting pregnant, and 100% of them walk home with a baby because there's no chance for that carrier to change your mind. So there really isn't any more secure way. That's the good part. The bad part is that it's expensive. The United States does not have a national health care system, and you can't be a part of it even if it did. So you have to pay for your in vitro fertilization procedures. Because we have authorized this as a commercial enterprise, the egg donor and the carrier get paid. And because it takes a lot of work, and I have about 20 people in staff to accomplish this for the people in our program, we get paid as well to find all these things for you. So when all is said and done, you will expect, and only this is if you're doing everything, I'll throw the number out so you'll all leave the room, probably close to $100,000 when you're done. Now that can vary enormously. Uh, there are people who can go through this process with everything at $60,000, and those who could have $120,000. Um, <clears throat> for those just doing egg donation, it's far less expensive. Um, and that can be more like $40,000. But there's, there are pieces of the puzzle that will play in, and we can provide you with the financial piece of this. But that is the downside of this. I like to be honest. I like to scare people. I don't like people to be in sticker shock after the fact. So, that is sort of the reason for coming to the United States is the security of this, and I haven't seen anyone leave yet, but I do see some mouths again. Luckily, the dollar is getting weaker. <laughs> for you, that is. Um, with gestational surrogacy, what is happening is something very different. A woman is carrying a child for a couple that is not related to her, and that is precisely why the courts are so much more comfortable with it. It is not her genetic child. Um, and what is happening is one of two things with surrogacy. The first thing is if you have a heterosexual couple and they for some reason are unable to carry, whether that be psychological, medical, absent or diseased uterus, and they can create their own embryos, they can be transplanted into the carrier to carry them to term. This can also work for a gay couple, but then we call it egg donor surrogacy because you can't produce an egg if you're a man, um, except if you're a woman, if you're a lesbian couple, then you can, but um, generally lesbian couples we find that usually one of them can carry two, but we certainly do work with lesbian couples. If you need an egg donor, what we do is we first find you an egg donor, and her eggs are harvested, usually about 20 at a time, I'll leave this to the doctor to explain, and they are fertilized and then implanted into the gestational carrier. So she's carrying uh, the, the egg of a donor and the sperm of one, or in the case of a gay couple, sometimes two men. 
We will actually split into two petri dishes. One man will fertilize one petri dish, the other will fertilize the other petri dish, and one of each is implanted in the carrier, creating siblings who are half siblings biologically, who will be raised by two men and be legal siblings in this country. And we do this and are successful about 40% of the time getting twins at the same time. Um, the um, process from our agency's perspective is what we are doing is coordinating all of this for you. And we have a staff of social workers, case workers, egg donors, surrogates, who find these women for you, donors and carriers, and then bring them to the doctor's office where the procedures can be done, and then handle the legal work at the end so that everything comes back to Sweden the way it is supposed to be, and you can have your children here. I'll try to explain that to you as briefly as I can. Um, the first thing we're looking for with the case of donors is the biggest concern we have is genetically, making sure that there are no significant genetic issues that these women have. All of these women are between 20 and 29 years of age because women are born with their eggs and their eggs are as old as they are. And for most women, um, they're more successful the younger they are. So this is the crop of donors we find. Um, we look on college campuses, but we have specific requests made by couples. In the case of heterosexual couples, generally speaking, they want someone who looks like the wife. Um, in the case of gay couples, sometimes it will be college degrees, sometimes it will be blonde hair, blue-eyed and tall. Whatever you're looking for, amazingly, we have enough women applying that we can find. Um, either you can find it on our website, which is accessible by everyone without a password, and we'll have pictures and a very short blurb, which we have a 28-page profile to back up. Or you can literally give us 10 criteria and we can find it for you. Having said that, despite the numbers of women interested in doing this, we have a very strict screening criteria, and only about one in eight will pass that criteria. It is not simply a question of their genetic history. It is a question of whether they have the support of their husbands if they're married, their mothers and fathers if they are not, whether they follow through because the medication regimen is a daily one, and we want to make sure that they're making responses to our phone calls and our email inquiries. It is finding out whether they are of the right age and whether they come from a state where this is legal. As far as the carriers are concerned, the concern is not genetic at all. It is completely obstetrical history. No woman will pass our screening unless she has had a child before, and that child must have come into her life with no significant complications. So we look for histories about gestational diabetes, about hypertension, preeclampsia, anything like uh, prior miscarriages, anything like that will rule out a woman. We know the laws. In the United States, there is not just one set of laws, the federal laws, but there are 50 laws for 50 different states on top of the federal laws. So I literally need to be aware of yesterday's law in all 50 states. Um, so that when a woman applies to us, I know whether she can match with you. I also must know the law of Sweden so that I can determine whether in that state, when all is said and done, I can do for you what you need to bring those children back to Sweden. <coughs> and this varies, and Peter will talk about it from the gay couple perspective. It's different for a heterosexual couple than a gay couple. But we learn not just what the law was when we last had a heterosexual and gay couple go through the process, but what it is today when you're joining us, and eight no, and a half months from now when you're ready to do that legal process, has it changed? Because even though Martin doesn't feel it's likely to, it could, and so we want to know what that is. Um, so we match you with the right state, the right surrogate, the lawyer to can get you what you need. In the, end. Um, the process works so that depending upon what kind of level of contact you want with your donor, you can either meet her in person if you want a known donor and have a relationship that you could later introduce your children to, or you can have a completely anonymous situation in which you do not even get her first name, she doesn't even get your first name. In between, there are things called identified donations where we set up a meeting either at our offices 
or at the Cardone's clinic so that you can meet her, see if you like her, but not necessarily get identifying information. In the case of the carrier, it is always necessary to know these women. We expect you to have contact with them and support them throughout the process. You need to be there at the birth. These are your children. Anything that happens, it's your decision about what happens to them in the hospital and everything that happens along the way. And if you're going to do this, these women are doing this not solely because of money, not solely because they love being pregnant, but because of the enormous gift that they are giving to you and how that makes them feel. Literally, two summers ago, I was with my surrogate in California, and she and I were fighting over who got more out of the surrogacy. I said, I have two boys. What do you have? She said, the best thing I ever did in my entire life, and you made me feel so good about me. And this, I think, is what Lisa would have said if she had been here, that the driving force for these women is not money. Yes, they want to stay home with their kids, and their husbands are pressuring them to take another job, and this gives them a little bit of extra money to stay home with their kids. Yes, they love being pregnant. They want that rush of hormones back in their system. They love the power of giving birth. But the real reason that these women are so extraordinary, and especially the women we choose, because it may be one in eight for donors, but it's one in 30 for carriers that we're accepting, is this extraordinary sense of the gift and what it meant to them to have children, to give birth to children, and what it would mean to create that for another family. The, um, the process of matching with them requires communications between you. We will set you up initially for phone conversations. We will train you how to talk to your carrier, um, what you have control over, and what you must recognize you don't have any control over. Um, what you do talk about, their children, ask them any kinds of question. Any parent will tell you they'd rather talk all day about their kids than anything else. What not to talk to them about, money. We will handle the money. You will know before you even meet them what they're going to cost, and we will take care of all the financial side of things. Don't put that into the relationship. What we expect from you, weekly contact, at least an email once a week. What else we expect from you? We expect you to meet them before you even begin this process. We'd like you to see their homes. We'd like you to feel completely comfortable that the women we are choosing for this process can do this for you, and lovingly, supportively, we. Uh, with their husband's support, with their children's support. We expect you to be there at the birth. We expect you to show up to, to pick up the children and bring them back to Sweden and do all the legal work. And then, if you can, we'd like you to come for one meeting in the course of the pregnancy. It's not required, but most people come to the 20-week ultrasound. It's very exciting. You can actually see the baby. You can learn its sex. You can learn all about it. When all is said and done, um, and I'm leaving out a huge piece of this, which is the medical piece that will be explained by the doctor and the coordinator here. What we are aiming for in Sweden for a heterosexual couple is to have your <coughs> names on the original birth certificate coming back to Sweden as the parents of the child. We will get you a U.S. passport within 24 to 72 hours. Um, we will direct you on how to accomplish that. If you are in a major city where there is a 24-hour service, you can do it there or travel to that city, or you can overnight the package to that city and have it overnighted back to you in three days. We anticipate that people will spend two weeks minimum in the United States before the baby come home. It tends to be longer. Um, in our experience with the gay couples, but um, it is also, Peter will tell you a little bit about the laws of Sweden and bringing back, and I think Sweden may be a little bit longer. Actually, you should yeah. stay two weeks yes. with babies, since right. newborns shouldn't be, be flying over three hours. Although I did fly home with my son from California, which is six <coughs> hours when he was 23, 20, 36 hours old, both of them, so I know you can. <laughs> Um, well, people have spent as long as a month and even six weeks in the States. It's entirely up to you, but it is a cost factor in the surrogacy. And when we give you these horrible numbers, we're not counting your travel. 
into accounting all the expenses in the states of their travel and all the other things, but not necessarily yours. And so it's something for you to think about. We have had many international couples go back in less than two weeks, but I certainly expect you to expect that period of time. Um, the um, gay couples, um, we have learned that the best way in which for you to accomplish the second parent adoption back here in Sweden is for you to return with the mother's name on the birth certificate, which would be, in this case, the gestational carrier, but deprived of all of her legal rights. So she cannot come back and get anything from you, but you need that woman's name in order for the Swedish authorities to uh, take it to the next step, and Peter will talk in greater detail about how you do that. Um, I think that um, I will leave questions for me which are probably pretty significant um, uh, to the end to let you hear more about sort of the medical process and the Swedish process.